Today, I want to address the issue of artificial intelligence within the corporation. Now, this talk is not going to go into the mysterious AI, the, the robots that are going to eventually take over the world and need to be controlled and make sure that they don't decide that humans are irrelevant. Uh, no, we're going to get down to more of a basic level where AI can help with running some of the structured parts of the business. Now, you see AI in a lot of, uh, a lot of areas like this. You see like the smart pump on the right hand side with the gap. You pull up to the gas pump and the pump can find where the intake is and, and, and fill your, fill your gas for you. You see sometimes the, the robot sniffers in airports uh, looking, you know, all the time for explosives or ammunition or things like that that could be dangerous uh, on a flight. The goal of AI, of course, is to mimic some level of human intelligence, but most of the time it's restricted to specific tasks. And those pictures illustrate two of those specific types of tasks. So what we want to do is talk in the corporation about what what kind of artificial intelligence you may find within the corporate environment. So the first kind is what they call an expert system. You've run across a lot of those expert systems. You, you run across them all the time when you go to Amazon and start shopping and you see the recommendations below before and after you've put a something in your cart or finished an order. They'll be, keep looking for other products that might interest you. That, basically is an expert system. It imitates certain amount of reasoning skills and presents advice or uh, information to you to try to solve problems that you might, you know, not even know that you have, for example. The next type of system that you may run up against is a neural network. Now they attempt to emulate the way a brain works. And I ran across one neural network during my work in, in aerospace and the system that they put in place was in, um, in Boeing to look at individual parts, to look at their similar characteristics across the different plane models. So a part that might be put on a 737 might be very similar to the part that they put on a 787 or a 767 or any of the other planes that Boeing makes. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to take the engineering drawings and put them through this neural network and try to figure out what the differences are between part A and part B. Because many times uh, they ran into circumstances where part A on the 747 was identical to the part A on um, the 767 and they were buying them from two different vendors and the price was radically different between the two vendors. Well, the, the engineers then got together and said, okay, these two parts are very similar. What are the differences? Can we make the, them the same part and buy them all from the less expensive vendor? And that's what a neural network wants to do is it, it want, you and I can look at something and say, these two things are similar. What the neural network was able to do then is to look at those parts on an engineering level, on a numbers and sizes and much deeper than a visual inspection could do to try to determine if the parts were in fact the same or 90% similar or whatever they could determine what percentage similarity that they were willing to benchmark as they started comparing these individual parts. So that's what a neural network does or attempts to do. Then you have a genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithm basically tries to, tries to emulate evolution. Um, you've seen some of these websites that are trying to emulate what it's like to, to have a virus let loose into, into the world. And yeah, you know, I think the game's called Pandemic. Uh, I know there's a board game of it, but I think there's a computer related version of it as well. And, and that's basically a genetic algorithm a type of AI that does all of these estimations under the hood and gives you an answer that it calculates. Um, and it's amazing a lot of times how relevant the answers become to the solutions you're trying to find. So the survival of the fittest is the example that they use here in the text. 
And the last type is the intelligent agent. It's a special purpose knowledge-based information system that, you know, looks to do specific tasks. It's very simple, similar to the first one we talked about in that it, it, it could be a recommendation system. It could be, it could be a, a smart contract in a blockchain. It could be uh, various types of intelligence that's put inside of another computer program to accomplish certain tasks. And those tasks then make it easier for, for humans to work through because we don't have to have the minutia then of accomplishing those tasks on our own. So that's kind of a short introduction of what artificial intelligence is. This is the kind of artificial intelligence that you find in corporations. I know that there's a lot of work being done with robotics and AI in robots to do certain tasks that are much more advanced than what you generally will find in a business. But this kind of gives you an idea of the kind of level of AI that you'll see in any business. So if you like what you, what you heard this day, could you hit that like button and help out the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks much.